to the video review for the Metal Card Bot S Last Train. And here he is with some other Sam G designs with Takara robots. And here's a look at the box. It is a typical clamshell with a window on it, and you get excellent CGI model. And then another CGI model of the combined form, and then another CGI model of the combined form. The only time you see the core robot is right here. And then this is what, just pictures of the actual toy, and then more CGI models. And then a look at the instructions. They are kind of special since they have a colored cover sheet, but nothing else that interesting about it except for the artwork. And then here's a 360 view of his final combination. And of course, you could just tell his proportions are perfect. Um, he looks excellent from every angle. There's no kibble to speak of. Everything's just so well done. And I love these little chrome gold effects on the back of his shoulders. Everything just looks really gorgeous. But I guess it's not that hard when you just have robots that turn into boxes. I, I guess it's not too difficult. But yeah, obviously perfect design. And then we get a close-up of this head sculpt. Um, his head is, of course, perfect looking. You do get the pupils in his eyes, which is very nice metallic green paint, which really helps show it off. And then, of course, all the chrome gold, just really standout feature of this guy. Um, he looks very excellent. And this... Helmet doesn't actually cheat, it actually does go on his core robot head. He doesn't get a new faceplate or anything. That is actually the robot's face, so he doesn't do any cheating. So that's um, one of the accessories he comes with. He also has the metal card, which has beautiful artwork on it. And then, of course, the cool crest on the back. And then he does have, of course, his claw weapons. And these claws are nice and poseable, so you can get kind of a reaching kind of look to it. So they almost pose like fingers, which is very nice, and they can close up and expand as well. So that's pretty great that these are articulated. And these just clip on to the side of his arms with this. And they're, they are not actually identical. There is a correct front and back, like this is the front side, it's got one screw hole, and then the back sides have multiple screw holes. So they are actually not just the same thing molded twice. And then the claws, same thing, there's a front and a back side. And the plastic on the claws themselves feel a little cheap, they feel like that kind of softer plastic. Not rubber, but they are kind of a softer plastic you could carve through with a hobby knife pretty easily. But yeah, really just great little claws. And these, you just join them together and then you just fold them up into themselves. And that's how you get those ready to, and you just clip them together. And that's how you put those together for the metal card, which we'll just clip on right here. So there's that chunk. It's not very rectangular, but it does the job. And then he does have another little accessory which is hidden in his shin. So these can these compartments open up. And then this is the this is the shin that his helmet goes into. And the other shin has a gun in it, which also serves as a trailer hitch for the core robot. So this is just the gun and it just folds open. And then it's got the handle here. And it's a rectangular handle. You could fit that into the combined mode if you want. It doesn't look very impressive, but he does get that pistol going. So it's another nice accessory. In terms of articulation, this guy's got pretty much everything you could expect. So he's got his um, kind of a universal joint neck. So it goes up and down and then it swivels all the way around. It's not a ball joint, surprisingly. And then... His shoulders do rotate 360 on ratchets. Um, these 
The chest pieces do have a tendency to get unpegged because they're just being held in with some very tiny tabs. So you might have to hold on to the chest to rotate these around. They do have outward motion this far, so pretty much the entire distance until it bashes into his helmet. And then he does have bicep swivel, thankfully. And then he does have 90 degrees on the elbow, you can see there. And then for the wrists, there he is missing wrist swivels. So that's like the only piece of articulation he's meaningfully missing. And then he does have a hip rotation, which is kind of weird because everything kind of gets in the way because this is normally against his back, but you can move this down. And then you can get hip articulation. Then he does have like this transformation joint here to help you clear everything out of the way. It kind of... Um, breaks the sculpt, it's probably not really meant to use that articulation. It doesn't really work very well, and it hurts his stability a little bit as well. So it's better to just have this there to help hold him together. And then the hip skirts do move out of the way. Um, they do have like the spread out feature, which is nice. And then he does have his typical universal joints for the hips go um, most of the way forward, the hip skirts kind of get in the way, all the way back. And then you do get, for the knees, you do get about 90 degrees there. And then he does have a knee swivel, and not really much for the thigh swivel. So he does have a little bit of an issue where he's got all this weight, and this joint is not great. Um, I didn't look closely at the directions, maybe I'm missing something that locks all this into place. It doesn't look like it. I don't think I missed anything. But um, because of all this articulation, he is a little bit on the floppy side in the torso. Everything else holds together pretty good. And then he does have, lastly, he's got ankle tilt, but not very much. Like, you're not going to get any dramatic spreads on his hip out of this guy. He's just not that kind of figure anyway. He's not going to really pull a dynamic kind of pose. This is probably the best I can do on this guy. It's just, um, yeah, he's just not really meant to get into like cool fighting poses. He's just meant to stand there and look intimidating. But the articulation is technically there, but I think it mostly breaks up the sculpt, especially in the hip area. And his hips are a little bit not strong enough for, for how much bulk this guy has. They're just a little bit, a hair too weak. But technically, you could probably get him in some cool poses. Like just that looks pretty good in and of itself. And then I do like these kind of effects here. They do look like shoulder cannons. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, obviously great looking robot. So let's go ahead and get him transformed, which is a bit of a feat he is. Pretty complicated. The core robot is pretty complicated. The limbs are nice and simple. But yeah, for his head, you are going to open up the sides of it. They do hinge open, and then you can tilt these little fins back just to get them out of the way. And I guess this is technically a little flying drone. And then you can just go ahead and put that off to the side. And then his arms do have that sliding joint, which helps with gravity. So these just slide right onto these ridges right here. And then the legs kind of do a similar thing where they, they slide into a rail system. So the rail is right here, and then there's these ridges here. Um, which works well enough. It just slides. It's very simple, but it slides together. And then you get the core robot. So here's just the torso of the main character. And then technically you can drop the arms onto Rex Kaiser, but they're very loose. So they're not... These, these rails don't actually technically fit. They just slide loosely on. They don't lock into place at all. So probably these arms are not compatible or the Rex Kaiser limbs are probably not going to be compatible with Blast Train. 
So transforming the feet in the trains is very simple. You could basically see everything it's going to do. You just fold down the toes, fold up this heel, and then you just straighten out the ankle. And then you can pull this section up to make it look the correct shape. And then you're going to open up the shin, and that's where we're going to go ahead and take the helmet. And we're just going to fold that around this post. So it lands right here. It's not quite straight. Okay, and once you got that straight, you're just going to fold this up. And there you have half of the train mode. And then with the arms, it does kind of a couple neat little tricks. Like this part is going to slide here. And that actually recesses this gold piece. And then the cannon parts are going to slide back in. And then you're going to take the fist and rotate that inside of the forearms. That's pretty typical. And then you're going to just rotate the arm around and put the whole forearm into that cavity you made by sliding everything. And then you can see you have a connection joint here. And you can rotate this to a male or a female connection. So you can really put the trains in any order you want. And then you're going to take these two halves and they're just going to click together here. Maybe. Um, and then this is supposed to slide. Oh yeah, there's a little stopper right here you can push in. And that will slide everything and collapse it into one of these nice train cars. And then it looks like for this joint, you're only going to get a female joint, but there you go. And then you have the combination joint. You're probably going to technically want to fold that here because then it's got a fake joint right here on this side, which cannot be used. All right. And there's two train cars linked up and technically these are, I don't know, 16 inches or so all together. So the whole combination will be about 32. And then we have the core robot himself. So we'll turn him into just a robot. So you're going to lift up his hip skirts. You're going to rotate his waist around. So you got to lower this section. And then his legs are on sliders, which have a nice little button here to slide them up and they lock into place and you can just press the button to slide them back down. So he is going to have like a little gap right here. And then this combination joint, you're going to rotate this way behind his calf and that will expose his feet. And then for the head, you're just going to rotate that around. You're going to push in, push his chest. Oh, maybe I... Shoot, I think I had him wrong for combination mode. I think he was supposed to be pushed back the whole time. I messed that up. Oh, well, anyway, um, he's going to be pushed this way. And then you're just going to rotate the arms and the shoulder panels. And then you can rotate these little cufflinks pieces, his combination chest up. And there you have his robot mode. So obviously he loses a lot of his height and his mass. He's now only nine inches, but that's still bigger than like Shinkalian figures and even bigger than Blue Cop. So he's still pretty gigantic. And then overall, this figure doesn't look that great. Um, I definitely would not have bought him if he couldn't combine. So he does have the same universal neck joint. He does have 360 nice ratchets on the shoulder. He does have rotating biceps. He does have a double joint elbow for transformation. He does have wrist articulation for some reason. Um, which seems very unnecessary, especially because his cuffs kind of get in the way, so you can't even get them all the way. Um, he does have his universal hips, as we saw earlier. Oh, he does have full outward motion. And then full forward kick, full backward kicks. Um, he does have this hip skirt mess kind of in the way back here. So it's going to limit what you can get out of that. His back does look pretty clean for the most part. It has got this giant train section. 
And then he does have like these huge panels on his legs. But overall, he's pretty clean and elegant looking. Um, not too bad. And then for his knee joint, he does have exactly 90 degrees. And he, he does have toe pivot, which is almost nothing. Oh, and, a, and a thigh cut as well. So overall, good articulation. And he still does have that waist joint, which is more useful in this mode. So you can get some good poses out of this guy. So the benefit is that his poses look a lot more natural than his combined mode. And then for his final mode, you're going to need this gun. I forget. It's got a square post. And you're going to need to fold this up. And this is actually going to become a trailer hitch for the train. So you're going to need this section. And then you do fold his cuffs forward to cover his hands. You're going to compress his head down. I don't think it really matters which way. You can open the train eyes. And then you're just going to straighten out his arms with his shoulder pads. And then you're going to rotate those behind himself because he has these butterfly joints, which are going to cause them to rotate forward. And then these do clip together a little bit. They tab together slightly just to help hold everything in place. And then you get the cow catcher up here. And then for his legs, you're going to open up this crotch piece and that's, and then you rotate his hips all the way around. And then this butt flap is going to end up back here. And then you're going to straighten out his legs. You're going to open this panel. It opens twice to cover up this huge gap right here. And then his foot is going to basically break right here in the shin. And then it's going to rotate up here. And there you have basically his whole train mode. Oh, and then one other thing you have to do is this crotch piece has two hinges. So it's going to just rotate under itself basically. And then you just sandwich everything together. And you're going to want to move that crotch piece because otherwise it'll the gold will scrape on the ground. And then you have basically this train mode. And then his trailer hitch. There's these two panels here that fold down to just cover some of the gaps. And his trailer hitch is going has this tab and this tab. And that's that folds in right here so you get that male attachment part and then you can combine his whole train uh, which is not 36 inches because he's not he's not twice as big it's more like um i don't know something like 24 two full feet but yeah he's a gigantic train and if you're wondering if he scales with the plow rail, no, he doesn't. He's much, much bigger than this train in every way. Um, so I got this guy. He was about 120 bucks after shipping on G Market. You could probably get him for a hundred dollars. That's what I was able to order Flame Nova for about 106 dollars. Um, obviously, he's well worth it. The quality, everything's top notch. He's just a lot of fun to transform back and forth. And then technically you could give this guy an extra tall mode if you don't collapse his legs. He's now closer to 13 or 14 inches. And then let me do that thing I messed up. So you're supposed to press his chest back so that he's back here. And that, I guess, gives him a better silhouette. It's the difference between this and this. So his chest just doesn't stick out as much. But then the weird, and um, his center of balance is actually a little bit better like this it's when he's properly transformed. Um, his head is further back though, so it's kind of a trade-off. But anyway, um, highly recommend this figure. It's, uh, it's incredible to think that this is a kid's toy and that there are going to be kids that are growing up with this quality of toy. This is definitely a premium toy. Uh, this is a toy you would expect Bandai to sell for $300 or more. And you can get it for about $100, which is insane to think about. I don't think that'll last. Um, these figures are just too good. 
the quality is too high. I don't think they can keep making robots that are this high quality. But anyway, I'll see you in the next one.